Well, is there a self? Is there really a self? My, what I've been saying is that, that the self is a process. It's an experiential process. It's under constant construction. And I've just tried to indicate some of the ways it changes across waking and sleeping and mind wandering and daydreaming and dreaming and lucid dreaming. So it's a, it's, it's a process that's constantly being configured and reconfigured. So then, well, what exactly is it? Is, it, is there really a self? Well, one way to go with that, and this is very popular nowadays, is what I call a kind of neuro-reductionist. I actually call it neuro-nihilism in my book. And this is the idea that, well, really there is no self. And sometimes this is linked to Buddhism, because in the Indian context, the Buddha's idea was anatta or anatman, no self. And so the idea is often, well, there really is no self, and neuroscience is saying the same thing that the Buddha said. All there really is, this is not the Buddha's words now, this is the, this is the modern, modern neuroscience way of talking, all there really is is the illusion of a self created by the brain. Now, there's a sense in which I think that view gets something right. But I also think it's misguided. So the sense in which it gets something right is if you think the self is a thing or an entity, that it's single, that it's unified, that it's permanent, that to use philosophical language, it's a kind of a substance, an entity. If you think that the only way there could be a self is if it were like that, well then, if there isn't anything like that that you can find, then it's going to follow that there is no self. But that's not really the way we should have been thinking about the self in the first place. Rather, as I've been trying to illustrate, the self is not a thing or an entity, it's a process. And it's enacted. That is to say, it's through perception, through memory, through social cognition, through culture, through language, and through all of that being rooted in the life of the body, which of course includes the brain, but isn't just about the brain. It's also about the brain being in a body geared into a world, immersed in an environment, that the self is constantly being enacted through that dynamics. And so it's not a fixed single thing. And even if we feel experientially as if it is, of course, when we examine it carefully, it's not. It's a process. The way that I put this in the book is to say that when I say that the self is, a pro is not a thing but a process, what I mean is that it's a process of I-ing, a process that enacts an I in which, and in which the I is no different from the I-ing process itself. Rather like the way dancing is a process that enacts a dance in which the dance is no different from the dancing. So in summary then, self-making this is the Indian concept of ahamkara, is like dancing. And the self is like a dance. Not a thing or an entity, but a process.